Welcome back, everybody. It's part four of 109 of Smack Talk, and it's time to get into our main event, special feature, attraction, whatever you want to call it, of the week. And this edition is Superstar Scores, and we're going to be targeting Triple H. Now, if you don't know how Superstar Scores works, it's kind of one of those top rope list sort of things where we have a list of different things that we have to go down, but at the same time, it's more of a ranking scale. And it's not a power ranking or anything like that. It's rating a particular superstar on a bunch of different categories. Now, there's 10 categories broken down into five umbrella categories, obviously two apiece, and each is worth 10 points. You can also give somebody a zero if they're really that awful, and essentially what it comes down to is you give them a 10 or a zero or anything in between that, and you add it all up, the closest to 100 that's who will eventually give, you know, the top superstar score ends up going to whatever. We've done a couple editions of these so far. We've done uh, Shawn Michaels, who right at the moment has the overall top score. And I believe that it was uh, something like 80 or 83 it might have been. Let me uh, bring that up while I'm talking right here. That top score ended up being 83. Yep, I was right about that. The... Mick Foley edition, a little uh, step down. Then we went to Bob Holly, which actually was the birth of the whole Bob Core situation. We went to RVD a little bit later, and this is going to be the Triple H one. Suggested by you guys, because you guys thought that it might be pretty interesting to hear what our thoughts are, because we usually run down Triple H and talk about how we don't like him. So if we're breaking him down and giving an honest opinion of the performer that Paul Levesque is... Who would we? Uh, how would we rank him according to the superstar score listing? Ooh, look at you using real wrestlers names. <laughs> well, it does combine all of his different gimmicks and everything that he's done from every company that we're aware of. So, if he had a horrible gimmick in another company, like a terrorizing type of thing, that affects it. But if he also had a great gimmick, like you know the DX kind of stuff, it boosts it up a little bit. So I'm going to break this down and go uh, person to person on the umbrella categories. And as I mentioned before, it has two categories inside of that. The first of which is the ring skills. And that's broken up into athleticism and psychology. For the athleticism, this is basically their signature move set, their finisher. Can they perform a wide variety of moves on a regular basis? Do they botch a lot? You know, somebody like Sin Cara would get a really uh, bad score on this. Somebody like Shawn Michaels obviously got a really high score. I gave him a five. Uh, he was never a high flyer or anything of the sort, but he's somebody who he knows his limitations and what he can do, he can do really well. He usually doesn't botch much unless he has some kind of an injury going on, but he also doesn't try to do moves that he knows he wouldn't be able to pull off. So he's right smack in the center there at five. Uh, Psychology-wise, that's the wrestler's ability to tell a story in the ring. Do they make you believe that it's real, or do they sell their injuries properly? Does the match get boring after a while, or can they go for an Iron Man match? And I gave him a little bit of a bump up at a seven, because Triple H used to be really good at this, but lately, he's gotten to the point where it's just all about how Triple H beats the hell out of everybody. And the sad part about that is Triple H probably thinks that he's a 10 on this because in his mind, nothing should actually hurt Triple H. So he probably thinks that he's working with the psychology of how it should go. But for somebody like me who thinks that everybody has a weakness, he shouldn't be as unstoppable. So now with the athleticism part, what did you give him, Burhan? Athleticism, I would actually have to give Triple H a solid five. Uh, reason being, I don't see him as the high flyer who's more of the brawler, ground and pound type of guy. He could go in a match, but also he was the guy that was kind of very slow and sluggish at times. If you look at his match recently with Brock Lesnar, kind of getting on a bit with age as well. Um so that's that's my solid goal for him. And what did you give him for psychology? Psychology, I actually gave him a solid seven. Um, due to the fact that in terms of his prowess in the ring, he's actually a rather credible talent. He knows how to work a match. He has great chemistry with who he works with. And he also knows how to tell a great story. 
Wego, what are your what are your scores for athleticism and psychology for Triple H? First off, athleticism, I gave him a solid six. Um, and the reason for that is, if we're going back to some of Triple H's older match co- matches, because we're talking about his career as a whole, um, there's times he used to go to the top, he used to be able to move around a lot better than he does now. Um, I think prior to the quad tears and uh, basically general aging, he was a lot better than what people give him credit for. Um, he, as you said, he knows his limitations and he works with that. So I give him a six when it comes to athleticism, uh, on psychology, I think he has this down to a T. Um, he just knows how to tell a story in the ring. He doesn't matter if it's with a small guy. It doesn't matter with a big guy. Um, if it's a small, if it's a big guy, he'll uh, work the legs, break out the figure four, which he did, uh, from as a tribute to Ric Flair and, uh, break, break out the Indian death lock. Um, if it's a smaller guy, he'll work the beat down and do it well. And I've also, so generally I think Triple H has got psychology down to a T and I give that an eight. That's going to switch up to a different category, the mic skills. And now that we have this established of, you know, the, the differences between how we go about this, we're going to just do it, um, one by one instead of breaking the two parts. Charisma. If they get a mic, can they cut a promo? Do they stutter a lot? Are they repetitive? Do they keep things fresh? So on and so forth. My score, an 8. If you were to ask me about the top 10 people on the mic of all time, there's no way Triple H is going to be on that list. But at the same time, if you ask me for top 20, then he might be. Triple H has been very solid on the mic for pretty much his entire career. And the most entertaining, I would say, would be his time during DX. But at the same time, even when he's just the game Triple H, where you're the King of Kings or whatever he is, or not even in a program for somebody necessarily, and he's just being the boss, he pulls it off. He's not the most entertaining, but he does a damn good job. Burhan, charisma. Charisma, I would actually rate him at eight. Uh, reason being, he's very talented on the mic. The guy knows how to... Um, like crack a joke once every while. He was very entertaining with DX, very entertaining in every feud he's been in. I actually was more partial to him as a face rather than a heel, uh, but that was me. So I'd range him with an eight. Very, very talented and always knew how to sell himself. Where you go? Uh, charisma. Um, yep. I gave him a seven. I think it's fair to say, but he's comfortable on the microphone and he, whatever role he's in, he's generally very entertaining, except for his duration in Evolution. As much as I love that period, he had some really good mic work and some really fucking abysmal mic work during that time. Um, I think his strong suits was during the Degeneration X run, but I can overlook his work um, during his heel turn um, in Evolution. And there was some points during 2007, which I found him a real fucking drag, so... Um, so yeah, a seven for that. That takes us to the other one of the mic skills, the character. Basically, are they interesting with their gimmicks? Can they pull off being a heel and a face, or are they only limited to one and they can't really be justifiable as another thing? And I give him a six on that. It's a little bit of a downer because you would think, uh, with the game, the game and the King of Kings and Cerebral Assassin and all that, that he would have a lot of gimmicks to choose from, but at the same time, it's mostly DX in my mind. The game and the King of Kings and all that, they're all kind of the same. And they're a little bit boring. I mean, they're not uh, you know, the most boring gimmicks out there. They're, they're not the most silly, stupid kind of gimmicks. They're not Hornswoggle or anything. But really, are they anything that different from just a muscular guy who's better than you? Whether it's Cerebral Assassin, Game, King of Kings, COO, they're all kind of the same thing. And the Blue Blood gimmick that he had, that was interesting back in the day. The DX thing is good. Other than that, solid five. So the the DX bump gives him a six, but you know anybody can play the other part as long as they've got the muscle for it. Uh, Character-wise, what do you give him, Burhan? Character-wise, I don't know. For me, it's kind of weird. It's like he's... No matter what Triple H has done, he always plays the same character. He's, he's Whether he's quirky or he's very aggressive, 
he's always very monotone with I am the gamer. I probably would have to go with a five. Hmm. Wait, he's... well, I'm probably going to give. Did you need to say something else, Burhan? No, no, it's fine. Go for it. Um, as far as the character, I'm going to be a bit nicer and actually give him an eight during all of this. Um, whilst he's had some of his low moments, I generally think the blue blood gimmick drew a lot of fucking heat. Um, it might have been cheesy, it might have been one of those over the top gimmicks, but shit, it worked. Especially for its time. Um, eventually he transferred into being a very entertaining degenerate, and I think that's probably the peak of his character. It was one of the most outlandish, especially during his DX army run uh, with uh, X Park, uh, New Age Outlaws, China, etc. And then we had this next evolution of his character, um, no pun intended, with the game. And he became, whilst for the most part he was a wrestler, he delivered this very intense side of him where he would do absolutely anything, step on over anyone, and not stop on, not stop at anything to get what he wanted. He made you invest in him being a nasty son of a bitch, and people hated him. And... Whilst his gimmick isn't extraordinary as far as, like, description-wise, he was very good at it. He made you believe in it. And for that, I give him an 8. Solid points. Appearance is the next overall category that we have, and those include physique and entrance. Physique, of course, we're going to knock out first, and that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, are they in good shape, or are they somebody like Matt Hardy who gained a lot of weight? Uh, does the shape that they're in work with their character as well? Because for somebody who is supposed to be a big, muscular, tough guy, they need to be big and muscular. If somebody is a high flyer, it would seem kind of awkward if they were built like Vladimir Kozlov. So I give him a nine on that. I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due. Triple H is huge, and he looks like he could kick anyone's ass. And that he doesn't have that high flying thing. He isn't somebody who's supposed to be a luchador or anything like that. So. You put somebody like Triple H out there, you say he's a wrestler that beats people up for a living, I buy it. Brian? Hmm. Trying to think here. Uh, what was the physique. topic for him? Physique. Well, you have to give him a 10 at that. Because he's... Look at him. <laughs> the guy is well built. The guy is amazing looking and he always strives for perfection i've never seen triple h out of shape i've never seen triple h looking like uh, a pig i've never even seen him like extremely slim the guy has always looked uh, amazing in terms of his body where go as far as physique goes when you picture a professional wrestler it's generally a muscular guy with long hair wearing tights and that is exactly what triple h is he is a student of the craft he is Everything what a wrestler probably should be as far as physical appearance. Um, I give him a 9. The reason I don't give him a 10. Motherfucker, stop with a fake tan. Too much. <laughs> fucking umpa lumper. Entrance is the other half of the appearance category, and that combines everything from pyro, music, the taunts and actions and stuff that they do. Uh, 8 on me. Uh the multiple themes that they work, that uh, that he has, they all work for him. They all fit the character very easily. It's very flexible. Now that he's doing the COO thing, you can go with the King of Kings music. When he wrestles, you can go with the game. Uh, the, the DX stuff, of course, awesome entrances all the time with the, um, the tank that they bring into the ring and everything like that. Not into the ring, into the arena. <laughs> That'd be great if they brought it into the ring. That'd be awesome. Try uh, to bring a tank in the ring. Right. The first, the first ever match on a tank. You have the, the DX tank versus the Stone Cold Zamboni thing. That'd be a good match. Tank wins. Um, the whole spitting the water thing, that's something where people like to do that, to do their like impersonations and imitate that. They recognize it. It's simple, but it works. And yeah, you know, I think an eight's a, a very solid score. It's no Undertaker, which is my benchmark for number ten, but it is a damn good one. And he's got multiple ones to choose from as well. Entrance wise, what's your score, Burham? I give him a seven. Uh, reason being, I don't mind his DX one. That's fine. But the water thing, every time he does that water, he's like spitting water in the air. 
You know, there's countries that go without water and Triple H is freaking using barrelfuls of it. <laughs> well, um, he does toss it out to the crowd. So he's, he's like, here, here you go. You can have the rest yeah, of it. <laughs> yeah, here you go, poor children. Uh, yeah, so but he it, throws it off about the lid half the time. Right. Do you know what I mean? He could so end up like, injuring that child who's like thirsty. Back and, when, uh, um, hang on, hang on. If I was hit with a bottle by Triple H, I'd mark the fuck out. Well, back when Ryback was doing the big hungry thing, they should have gone with it, and he should have had, like, a chicken leg where he bites it and throws the rest of it out to the crowd. <laughs> they do the tour of Ethiopia, and they both just do that, and that's how they get their food. <laughs> that's so much, wrong. How much hate would they get? That'd be fucking awesome. I would I would bump up the character, uh, the rating for the character thing. If Stupid he did that. chicken leg. <laughs> Oh, Alright, continue, God. Barry. What did you do for the entrance? Uh, for the the entrance, as I said, I, I'd give him a... I, I believe it was a six. And it's because of the fact that it's his entrances never had anything special. And when he came out as Conan that one time, oh my God. That was cool as shit. That wasn't cool as shit. He looked like an idiot. You he didn't like follow idiot. it up with the promo of the Arnold Schwarzenegger speech. <laughs> Who is your father? What does he do? <laughs> Uh, with, with me it just I just don't see it when he was with DX I could I could see the fun thing that they used to do together as a group when he was doing the suck it crosses crotch chop uh, but with the spitting water thing it, it was like fair enough people do mock it and it's one of those things that you love to make fun of it but at the same level it just it, I, it wouldn't be to me as as special or as entertaining as Goldust's gimmick, and the way that he goes into the ring with with the Shattered Dreams production sort of thing. Um, I'd like to see him do the water thing where he does that oh, kind of <laughs> spin he it out actually like that. did. Don't don't you remember he was a uh, Triple H Dust when he competed against Owen Hart for the uh, European Championship? He did nope. that with the, the spitting. He, I believe, he did the spitting. Yeah, hmm. and then Owen beat him. <laughs> and uh, Triple H was like, well, you didn't beat me. And Sarge sort of went, yeah, he did beat you. And Owen got the championship. Um, but yeah, so I don't I don't see it as that great. I think there's more entertaining entrance theirs and entrance themes. Um, I do. I always marked out when he did, came into the ring with the, the Motorhead theme and also with the Evolution theme. Not the Evolution is a mystery, the, the other one. Hmm. What's your score, Wego? I am actually going to give him a 10 for entrance. Hmm. Um, I think he's had some of the greatest entrances of all time. As far as the water spitting, I think it's one of the most iconic uh, mo- iconic uh, entrances in professional wrestling. Everyone knows it. Everyone marks for it. And every time you're in an arena watching, you're waiting for him to do it. It's only uh, like The Undertaker that just comes down in the black lights, makes the lights come on. Everyone marks out for it. That's Triple H's thing. And when we're talking about awesome entrances... D-Generation X has probably got the best entrance in professional wrestling. Um, especially since they added the glow sticks. And let's not forget the fucking SummerSlam entrance against uh, Legacy. Um, with the tank and the amount of ridiculous over-the-top py- pyros they've had. They've had some of the most unique entrances as well. But even on his own, he's had some really cool ones. Minus the dry ice burns that he had against Brock Lesnar. Um, so... I love Triple H's entrances. I'm, I'm a, maybe I'm biased because I'm a Triple H fan, unlike uh, the rest of Smart Out moments. But uh, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for Triple H's entrances, and not just to forget that the whole part of his entrance to the ring back in DX, he used to do the whole "Are you ready?" stuff. That was a part of it, and that was a lot of fun too. The amount of fan participation, and lastly, we're talking about theme music. My time was one of my favorite themes ever. Um, the game, the Motorhead's the game, that is one of the best themes and most memorable ones. And Evolution Line in the Sand is an awesome theme too. And obviously DX speaks for itself. So there's great themes, great entrances, definitely earns a 10 in my book. I love My Time, I forgot about that one. There's actually a really good uh, mashup on YouTube of My Time with Jericho's theme. That's random, but cool. Yeah, it works really well. Uh, we have two other big categories to go with, uh, obviously, four left uh, overall. Backstage and crowd reaction. Backstage is the first one that we're going to knock out here. Uh, professionalism and marketability are the two things inside of this. And professionalism is basically 
uh, whether or not they're a locker room leader or do they cause problems behind the scenes? Are they somebody who gets really into the politics and screws people over or do they put people over? And that's the lowest score out of everything that I gave him here. And I'm I'm being a little bit uh, generous, maybe, because you, you never really know 100% what things are true and what negative stuff that you've heard isn't true. But I give him a three. Uh, I'd give him a lower score if everything that we've heard tends to be true. But that stigma alone definitely pushes him down and you still can't trust it all so i can't give him a zero but i can't give him anything more than a three because we've heard this so much that he lets his ego get in the way that he says for people like mick foley that nobody gives a shit uh that him and a couple other people are basically the reason why a lot of other people in the company don't get pushed because they don't think it's quote best for business and he seems like He shouldn't be that type of guy, but at the same time, when you see all the evidence in the ring of situations like with the the John Morrison and Miz feud that they had with Triple H and uh, Shawn Michaels, who was it all the time that was taking the beating? Shawn Michaels. Who always came back? Triple H. I got, did the... I got a comment on that. That's actually just general tag team psychology. The smaller man always takes the beat down. The bigger man always gets a hot tag. Even if Triple H isn't necessarily the big guy, though, it, it tends to work out that way. When he loses his matches and people go like, oh, he put over Jeff Hardy. He didn't really put over Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy got his ass kicked in that one match that they had that he won and wins with a roll-up. That's not really necessarily putting the guy over. It's different when he loses flat out to John Cena or Batista. But Triple H does have a lot of things working against him where it seems like it would be too much of a coincidence for him to have all these things being cast to him about him being belittling and self-serving and all that. And then you see a lot of evidence. So you can't believe it all, but a lot of the evidence stacks up three in my book. Burhan, professionalism. <sighs> the moment he came out and said that he didn't mean a word he said when he apologized to every guy in the back, that annoyed me. Um, he has so much disrespect for, the, for his peers, but yet has even less respect for the guys who are the future of this business. In my opinion, he is someone who lacks respect, who doesn't have any respect. Most people can say it's a part of his gimmick, but there's a lot of rumors going around about who he is and the way that he acts. I doubt that Triple H has a professional bone in his body when it comes to other wrestlers. Um, And partly you can say it's because of the way that he came through in the industry because you had a lot of guys older than him putting him down and trying to keep him down. But we're not. That's not that time anymore. Um, I will give him credit, though. He does look out for people that he cares for. Shawn Michaels, when he was going through his drug problem, Triple H was there for him. When Shawn Michaels had any issues, Triple H was there for him. When the former New Age Outlaws, uh, you know, Billy Gunn and Road Dog were sitting there trashing the guy. Triple H stayed mum and they came back to the company with their tail between their legs and he allowed them to come back. So, yeah, I give him a, a two. Where you go? I am only going to give him a five on this. Um, there's definitely got to be something going on because you don't hear all that come out of nowhere. Generally, when there's something said, there's normally a hint of truth to it. And that's a shame because he could do so much better. Um, as far as Triple H goes, I think that it's over-exaggerated on how bad he is or has been, just because whenever you are... Because normally, all the shit we hear is coming from guys that have bended up out of the company. Mm-hmm. They're going to be bitter. They're going to be pissed off. And if they've had a running with Triple H, that running to them is probably going to feel a hundred times worse. But when you actually hear Triple H sit down from his side of the story again, for example, who's that? Who's that guy with the huge lips and looks like an ugly motherfucker from Canada? Uh, he always does the uh, shoot interviews with wrestlers. Um, 
off the record, that was the show, I, uh, Josh something or other, but when you actually listen to his interviews and stuff, the guy doesn't seem the type of dude to... And maybe that's just the way he's coming off and that he's playing it right and maybe I'm just buying into it. I don't get the vibe that he's just going around going, oh, I'm going to fuck this guy to better myself over. He's normally generally got a reason for everything that he does. And whilst I think it's over-exaggerated, there's got to be some truth to it. So he's going to get a five. The other half of this is marketability. As a wrestler, good with public relations? Do they get arrested all the time? <laughs> Are they good on talk shows? Do they do charities? You know, that kind of stuff. Basically, look at it as John Cena would be a 10 for that. And somebody who is a huge pain in the ass, they would be a zero. Triple H, got to give it to him, nine. He looks larger than life, so that works with the product. It makes it seem interesting. He's funny. He can conduct an interview well. He comes off like an intelligent businessman now. I mean, he's gotten to the point where he does have that kind of... Uh, that kind of thing going for him where you can buy into him being one of the leaders of WWE for the future. But at the same time, he hasn't completely erased all of the elements of his character and just become, you know, a suit. So, uh, if you look at that, you look at how people do buy his merchandise and they buy into him as a member of management and a veteran in the ring. I think you got to go with a nine. He doesn't seem to cause any problems and he seems to only do positive stuff. Brian. Uh, I'd have to go with you on that one and do one better, a 10. He's never, ever been in the public eye for being, uh, for doing anything negative. It's always what other people have said. So uh, he's always conducted himself professionally. He's always, um, he's never like gone out of his way to make himself or the company look bad. So yeah, he gets a 10 from me. Where you go. Um, I give him a nine, much like you did, Mango. Um, and he he has the look, he has the ability, he has just a very good presence when you want to put him in the media's eye. There's nothing wrong that he really does. Um, it's kind of hard to give him a reason why he isn't marketable, and he, the truth is he is marketable because you look at firm as far as merchandise selling goes, shit, he, and, he outsold John Cena during his late, latest DX run, so... That goes to say something. So, very marketable. Um, I only think the reason I don't give him a 10 is in this new day and age, since we've had the whole Benoit killing himself and the steroid issues in the media, he, when you look at him, you pretty much go, that fucker's on steroids. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's the only stigma he might have as far as being a marketable guy in the media, right? Not that they focus on that too much anymore, but it's there. And we have two other categories left under the crowd reaction umbrella. Popularity and credibility. Popularity, of course, how loud are the cheers or the boos, depending on if they're a heel or face. Do they sell merchandise? Are the ratings up or down when they're on the screen? Do they have a lot of Twitter followers for the people like Zack Ryder and anything like that? And I'm going to give him a pretty solid eight here. He's never been the guy, but he's always been one of the guys. And it's pretty hard to deny that he is a really, really popular staple for the past God knows how many years. Uh, if he's a part of a card, the card tends to sell a little better, or at the very least, it looks better. If Triple H wasn't on the card for WrestleMania 30, as much as I don't want him to be in the WWE title match, or be you know the main event with something that I'm not going to like, I would be disappointed if he wasn't on the card. And... I wasn't that into the idea of seeing Brock Lesnar and Triple H when I went to WrestleMania this year. But at the same time, if they would have gone with Brock Lesnar against somebody like uh, Ezekiel, yeah, Sheamus or Ezekiel Jackson, that wouldn't have done as much as Triple H. So eight, good score. He's not the guy, but he's one of the guys for him. Um, I would consider him just above the mid card, uh, not the upper mid card. Um, he's not like the the company main event guy, the staple guy, in a sense. When it comes to someone like John Cena or Steve Austin or even at the time The Rock, but he's always considered the guy who's constantly been at the top. You know, the the one guy that you would rely on to have top matches. 
Um, he would draw uh, as well, but I would never usually consider him the guy that you would build the company around. Uh, so I give him a solid eight. Where you go? I'm going to give him an eight too. And I had, and before I was thinking about giving him a seven, but um, I think WWE has managed to make this generation uh, see Triple H as a novelty that they don't get to see as often. So that bumps him to a round. Um, an eight now and putting him on the same popularity level as a guy like Shawn Michaels, as a guy like The Undertaker. He was never the guy as far as popularity goes, but he's definitely up there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I got to say. I say he's probably at the pinnacle of his popularity later in his career now, too. Yeah, probably. He, he's going to be one of those people that is a legend for sure. Yeah, and I think a lot to do with that is since Austin and The Rock aren't there anymore, he's had more chance of to shine, especially through his evolution run, and he's put himself as a guy who is going to go down as a legend who may have not gone down as big prior to those guys going away. The last one we have is credibility. Does the person, somebody that you can see as a legend, a main eventer, and all that other kind of stuff, or are they just a jobber? And you got to give this guy 10. As much as I... Don't want to admit it. That whole idea of winning, you know, 99% of the time, and when you lose that other 1%, it's kind of through some kind of bullshit like uh, interference or a quick roll up or. Or it's to The Rock or Austin where it doesn't. <clears throat> Where it's acceptable. Right, yeah. You know, When you book yourself like that, you have to look like you're a fucking 10. So, uh, when somebody beats him, their credibility skyrockets, unless there's somebody who doesn't even need the defeat, like a Brock Lesnar. But, I, I wouldn't put him in that kind of position to be a 10, but WWE has. So, solid 10, and I can't find a reason not to give him a 10. Brahan? Uh, again, I'd pop him in the nine category. I, I please give me a reason not to give him a ten. <laughs> he's one of those guys where, yeah, he has consistently been booked well. He has been the the guy who's held every main event championship in the company, but it just seems a lot of things were done mostly for ego rather than for the betterment of the company. Um, yeah, he did pick up the step when Austin was injured. Him and The Rock were with the guys headlining pay-per-views. And he was a part of like one of the most important storylines in the company. I just don't see... I, and probably it's my own bias in a sense because he's married to the boss's daughter. But I would really like to know how big of an asset or how big of a main event he would have been without Stephanie. If he, if he would have stayed consistently in that spot. Mm. So when we tally all this up... I don't get mine. Oh, you didn't do it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, what is your uh, score for credibility? Um, I'm also going to go with a 10, because when it comes down to it, he's been booked like the main event player. The fans have got behind him like a main event player. And Triple H, whenever you hear that name in the mix, you think he's a credible threat to the title. You think he's a credible threat to his opponent. And... Reality of it is, as a like as a human being, when you look at him, he looks legit. You think he, by the looks of him, he could kick your ass, and he probably could. Um, he's just one of those guys that, when you look at his achievements and when you look back at his career, you're also you're always going to think he's a legend, uh, and he does deserve a Hall of Fame spot. It's going to be an awkward induction, being that he's tied into the family now, but he's definitely a credible main event player. So now that we <laughs> got your score... Now that you got my 10. All right. Uh, if we tally it up, what do you get, Uh You didn't do the math, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you get, Wego? Get, get, get back to me. Uh, I get an 80 for Triple H. 80 is a very good score. That's actually just a tad underneath uh, Shawn Michaels for the top score that we've had so far. And that's funny because Triple H and Shawn Michaels are my favorite two wrestlers. Really? Uh huh. There you go. That explains that. Brahan, you do the math yet? No, no, go yourself. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. Carry the one. <laughs> Any remainders left? Pemdas. Remember Pemdas? <laughs> yeah. 
for mine, um, he's actually not too far. He's actually, I don't even know if I want to say this. He's actually a 69. <laughs> <laughs> Only Burhan could get 60 fucking times. Brahan originally gave him a 10, and then he was like, I need to give him a 9, because he was, he was at 70 before. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out to a 73 for me, 10 points below Shawn Michaels, and I think that that's pretty pretty damn good. I mean, uh, I expected going into this to give him a little bit worse of a score because of the differences of opinion that I have uh, with Triple H and the way that he does things, but... Something that's been happening quite a bit with these superstar scores is even though it's somebody that we might not necessarily be the biggest fan of, we tend to give them pretty honest ratings. I mean, uh, Bob Holly and RVD, we gave them right around the middle, and that's pretty much where they are. They're, you know, the mid-carters and stuff. Mick Foley, he had something like a 65 or so because Foley's got his legend status, but again, he's not hitting it out of the ballpark in a lot of the other categories like athleticism and... Uh, credibility and all that so i think this is a pretty solid system here and i want to know what you guys would give triple h for your 10 different scores does he end up adding up to a solid middle 50 out of 100 does he go on the low scale 49 and down or is he part of the thumbs up category and going 51 up uh our averages wago says it comes out to a 74 just one point above mine and uh, I'm not going to factor in the averages or everybody else, but if we can get anybody else's opinions, we're going to pop them up on the comments on the website itself. So go ahead and check that out if uh, anybody else ends up throwing theirs that way. So once we take care of some Fantasy League business and some plugs, we're going to leave you with the outro in the next part. <laughs> 